Well, hello and welcome to Kenny Bear's Arms, everybody. Um, today we got a very interesting video. Um, I stumbled upon this weirdly enough because Jordan Peterson has been in the news lately, and I found this interview with this guy's uh, YouTube channel and another one of his videos here titled Texas Judge Rules Felons Can Buy Guns. Um, this video, he was talking about this case where this gentleman is under indictment for uh, whatever reason and was allowed to buy a gun. And then he goes on to talk more about the Second Amendment and everything like that and just gets everything wrong about it. Um, let's jump right in and uh, you guys can leave your comments down below about everything that's right and wrong with what I say or what he says. I hope I got everything correct and everything like that, but as always, correct me if I'm wrong and we'll revisit that. This story is really interesting to me and I'm curious what all you guys think because when I read the headline I felt one way, then as I was reading I started leaning the other way, and then the more I thought about it I started leaning back the other way. So I was kind of all over the map with this one. I'm curious what all you guys think, so let me know in the comment yeah. section below. But first let me run through the facts of this and then you can react. I want to make sure you know all, all the stuff about it before you uh, make your mind up. But So this is in the Texas Tribune. Texas judge rules that people under felony indictment have the right to buy guns under the Second Amendment. A judge appointed by former President Donald Trump based his decision on a June U.S. Supreme Court ruling that struck down New York's concealed carry law. So let me let me stop there just to explain a little more about this. It's not that the Supreme Court struck down the concealed carry law. I mean, they kind of did, but they said you can have a concealed carry law that is strict. You just need to have more clear and transparent criteria as to who's allowed to get a gun and who's not allowed to get a gun. That's my understanding of that Supreme Court case. So the way it's very, very difficult to get a concealed carry license in New York. It's uh -huh. a very, New York is a very anti-handgun state. Very anti-everything um, Because in the cities, you know, for obvious reasons, they don't want handguns in the cities because then you'd have more shootings, crime would go up and all that stuff, wow. and it's easy, it's easy to hide that on you, right? It's much harder to hide, like, a rifle or some shit or a shotgun. Um, so the Supreme Court said... And ironically, they want to ban rifles. You know, the fact that you have, like, arbitrary regulations and it's not clear why you reject people and why you accept people for a concealed carry permits, you have to change uh, your rules around them for them to, like, make more sense, basically. But they did strike down that specific concealed carry approach. So this right. judge looked at that law and said, because that was struck down by the Supreme Court, now I'm saying that people under felony indictment have a right to buy guns under the Second Amendment. I don't know how the New York case connects to this. I don't think it's really all that analogous. And I certainly don't know how the Second Amendment relates to this because, oh my God. you know, the Second Amendment <laughs> doesn't in any way, shape, or form speak to people under felony indictment having an individual right to buy a firearm. In fact, you don't even have an individual right to own a firearm under the Second Amendment. <laughs> Do you see why this video got me upset right away? It says we it says the the right of the people to keep and bear arms right in the text. What do you mean we don't have a right? It says it right there, the right of the people. It doesn't say the right of the militia. Now that's not my opinion, that's a fact. Go read the text of the Second Amendment. Again. It's very clear. I mean it talks about a well regulated militia. Yeah. It does. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be... The people to keep and bear arms. The people. He says it himself. ...infringed. So really they were talking about well-regulated militias no, having the right the to firearms. People. So the idea that there's an individual right and there's an individual right for convicted, or not convicted, excuse me, uh, <sighs> indicted felons? Indicted doesn't Huge mean you're stress. guilty but anyway, of a crime, let me give you right? more on this. So they say... It's no longer constitutional to ban people under felony indictment from buying guns. Like, if you're under indictment, you're not guilty of a crime yet. Like, so all your rights still exist. Like, you haven't lost your rights yet because you're not guilty of anything. Guns, a federal judge in Texas ruled Monday. U.S. District Judge David Counts, appointed by former President Donald Trump to Texas's Western Federal District, found that a landmark U.S. Supreme Court ruling from June invalidates federal law which prohibits those charged with a felony from obtaining a gun. It was not immediately clear if the ruling would be appealed. This summer, the High Court's ruling in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin, written by Clarence Thomas, struck down the state's concealed carry law 
and held that courts going forward should uphold gun restrictions only if there is a tradition of them in the U.S. in U.S. history. I don't understand that argument at all. Whether there is a tradition or isn't a tradition, that doesn't mean that you can adjudicate the constitutionality of something. That I, that just seems like a weird way to evaluate these cases to me. Count said no, he found no really. such history for limiting access to guns for those charged charged but not convicted of felony crimes, though he acknowledged his search was not exhaustive. In the same ruling, Counts both tossed a charge of obtaining a firearm while under indictment and noted it was unknown, quote, whether a statute preventing a person under indictment from receiving a firearm aligns with this nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. Also unknown, he said, is the constitutionality of firearm regulations in a post-Bruin world. So he's saying, because of that new Supreme Court case, you know, we might have to relook at all of our gun laws in the country. Yes! Quote, this court does not know the answers and must only try to faithfully follow Bruin's framework. In an er- he got that part right. I think that's incredibly silly, as if that can or should impact all other gun laws based on their own subjective interpretation of the Constitution, which clearly they're the ones who have the activist view of the Constitution in this instance. In an earlier filing, what? the U.S. Attorney's what? Office said the law to prohibit those under felony indictments. And then, But, like, what makes him qualified versus the Supreme Court to inter- inter- interpret the Constitution? Uh, what? I'm sorry, dude. You you can't even read the Second Amendment properly. It doesn't say the right of the militia. It says the right of the people. Indictment from obtaining guns does not interfere with the Second Amendment because it does not disarm felony indictees who already had guns and does not prohibit possession or public carry. Now, that's an interesting argument. They're saying, look, this doesn't, this doesn't take away anybody's rights because if they already have guns, they can keep them. <laughs> Which is kind of like, well, hold on. Maybe they shouldn't be able to have those guns if they're under felony indictment. Just a thought. But again, they haven't committed uh, quote, a crime. The Second Amendment has always allowed laws restricting the gun they're rights of, of groups crime. viewed by legislatures as posing a public safety risk, including those accused but not convicted of wrongdoing the prosecution wrote. So, in other words, um, I think that... Okay, so here's, here's what I was thinking about this. When I first read this, the headline, I thought, this is crazy. Like, of course... You should be allowed to not let this person buy a gun, right? Somebody who's under felony indictment. But then as I read on, I flipped to, well, I guess really you should be convicted before they said yeah. you can't buy a gun. Because anybody could be charged. The question is, are you actually found guilty? Yeah. That's a higher bar, you know? Because literally anybody could get charged. It could be innocent. And you want to take away their rights just based off and you can indict anything. the hunch. But then as I kept reading, I flipped back in the other direction. Because I think the arguments they're using are so incredibly shitty. Um... And, you know, I don't think, the, if you read, if a plain face reading of the Second Amendment says, really, there is no individual right to own a Stop gun. Stop it, there is. So if there's not an individual right to own a gun, the government, at their own discretion, could make whatever laws they want, restricting whoever the fuck they want. And so, uh, do I... And ironically, that's why it says, that's why we have the Second Amendment, because the, the government could make and restrict any law that they want. That's why it says the right of the people to keep and bear arms. You guys, how does this not make sense to this guy? Do I think it's reasonable for people under felony indictment to be barred from getting a gun? Absolutely. Absolutely I do. And look, here's the thing. I'm a moderate on the issue of guns. But part and parcel of being a moderate is, I think if you're a law-abiding citizen, you should be allowed to have a gun. I do. But... If you're not a law-abiding citizen, or you're potentially not a law-abiding citizen, or if you have severe Ooh. psychological issues, like, what's the point of a background check if it's not going to be, oh, hey, this person is a question mark. Let's not sell to them. Now, look, maybe there are some gun store owners who are smart enough to see somebody's under felony indictment, and they're like... See, this, is the, this, this next part is where he starts really losing me again. I don't want to sell to you, so I'm going to choose not to sell to you. That's good. But a lot of them are probably unscrupulous. They don't care who the fuck they sell to. So we probably should have a law saying, just don't sell to anybody where there's a fucking question mark. Because we always, in retrospect, we always realize like how stupid we were in certain instances. A lot of this recent, the recent slate of mass shootings, a lot of them happened from, from young men who were just old enough to buy a gun. And there were like 47 red flags around all of these young men. And if we just had, number one, made the age a little older to get a gun so not 18 make- but again that wouldn't have stopped it if there's all these red flags out there already and no one acted on those then it still it, it, it still happened 
they, they need to actually act on these red flags. Like, holy shit, this guy is, this guy is posting videos of him killing cats and stuff like that. Like, that should be, like, a thing that <laughs> goes, uh, yeah, this guy needs to go away or get some mental help, you know? Because I think, uh, yeah, that's... Mm. Make it 21 or something like that, right? And second of all, if we had just allowed for intelligent regulation, where it's like, hey, man, you know, one social media check on one of these idiots would have shown he was telling people, like, I'm going to go murder people. <laughs> like, okay, that social media check should be enough to say, of course I'm not going to fucking sell you a gun. You're saying you're going to murder people. But the gun stores aren't the ones that do any of this. They don't, they don't do the background check. They don't, they don't do any of that. The whole Nix check thing, the FBI does that. The gun store says, hey, you want to buy a, a product from me? Awesome. Here, you give me money, and I'll give you the product. That's the way it should be. But here we got the, the you fill out the 4473, this gun store, then contacts, yeah, that goes to the Nix check, with the, the FBI runs that, and the FBI says yay or nay, or delay this purchase. It hasn't, the gun store doesn't make the decision on who buys, uh, no. Homeboy was taking pictures with a dead bag of cats. See? The guy who did the Uvalde shooting. You know, if you can find that on fucking social media with a quick search, why the fuck would you sell that guy a gun? It's this not is up obvious. to the gun store, though. If you can see uh, an extensive mental health uh, record with super questionable things and somebody prone to violence, why the fuck would you sell them a gun? If somebody... I mean, is it up to Walmart, up to Target to decide what... You know, if if a per this person should be buying condoms or birth control or anything like that, or if the pharmacist or anything like that, it's just, it, what, no, it's not up to that. Per oh my god! But he's under felony indictment or convicted of a felony. Again, you could say, Kyle, that's discrimination. I say, okay, and it's still the right policy to not give them a gun. Ugh. So. Ultimately, I think that's where I land on the question. I really think the debate around the constitutionality of it is like 12 IQ level retarded. I, excuse me, you're not allowed to say that word anymore. I apologize. 12, 12 IQ level silly. Let's go with that. You're, you, sir, uh, 12 IQ silly. Read the history of the Second Amendment. This is something Tom Hartman has spoken a lot about. And there's, you know, around the debate around the Second Amendment, a lot of different things went into it, but... Uh, the wording being as it is, one of the reasons why was because Virginia was a majority slave state. Oh, my God. And so they wanted basically the right to own guns for their well-regulated militia. The militia they were referring to was a slave patrol. So the language Queen in the Second Noir Amendment was like, you have a right to a slave already. patrol to try to quell slave rebellions. And now in 2022, oh our goofy ass interpretation of that is no, you actually have an individual right to own a firearm. It literally says that. I've said it, says it several times It says nothing about an individual right to own a firearm. It does. Nothing at all. It says the people It was in regards to right. slave patrols, and also no. another interpretation is standing armies. Another interpretation is um, to quell Native Amer American rebellions, to, to, you know... Yes. That's another reading of it. Self-defense. <laughs> and this is, nobody talks about this history. The, the idea that it's like, oh, it's to stop the government from, uh, from becoming tyrannical. It That's is. just made up. No, it's not true. it is. That's like modern era. How did you? How did you? How does this guy forget how this country was founded? Ah, it's so frustrating. He just. How does he forget this stuff? Did, like, how long is? I, I, I'm just. I'm at a loss for words because of how ridiculous this guy. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose, just to, you know, be controversial or whatever, like on purpose. But like, if he really forgot that how this country was founded was. The British, we left there to get, you know, religious persecution and stuff like that. They wanted more freedom. They came over to, to start this great experiment of the United States. And I'm glad they did. But we have that because they tried to take our guns away because they wanted to disarm the population so they could control the population the way they wanted to. They didn't want us. They didn't want they didn't want their citizens leaving the country and starting a new a new life, a better life with freedom and all this stuff. No, they didn't want that. So they tried to stop it. How do you forget this stuff? Conservative uh, <sighs> narrative humping. Like, that's all it is. It's just we came up with a, an excuse for a thing that sounds good that we'll pretend like this is what the Second Amendment was about. It's not what it's about. It is, you're not going to take on a government that's, that's outgunned you. Uh, 
by a zillion times. Like you're not, they have nukes, they have tanks, they have fighter jets. You got to okay, fucking Ruger twenty two. Like it's not, it's not happening, right? So but anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's my breakdown anyone? of it. What do you guys think? Do you think Afghanistan, Iraq? You should anyone? have to wait until anyone? the person is convicted to say, hmm. no, you're not, you're not getting the gun. Or is felony indictment enough? Um, in my opinion, I, I want to err on the side of caution because I don't think there is an individual right to own a gun. There is. If you think there is, then you're going to say, no, you should be able, even maybe even convicted felons should be able to own guns. You might say that if you think there is an individual right, but there's not. So since there's not, do you have to be convicted or is indicted enough? I mean, I would have, why have a background check if you're not going to use it in specific instances like this? But I mean, how, just, you can't that makes no the sense to me. Why even have the background check then? There's no point for it. The whole point is to see what do you have on your record, and if there's anything questionable, I'm not selling you a fucking gun. Now we can't say this isn't questionable enough. I mean, Ugh. err on the side of caution when it comes to these firearms, man, because we know what it's like having 300 million firearms in circulation. Yeah, and we know what that's. There's like. not that much, and it ain't bad pretty. Things that happen. We with are that. among developed nations. We have the most mass shootings, and we also have not the most true. guns. That's not a coincidence. It's not. So again, I'm a moderate on the issue. I'm not a hard line or I don't want to ban guns or anything like that. As well, I certainly sure. want to have a strong background check system that keeps guns out of the wrong hands. And this is not helping us on that front. If you want to see me and crystal. Ball no, I don't. Um, oh, I've seen enough. You guys, let me know what you think about that. Leave your comments below. And Oh my goodness. I'm glad that his video only has like 30,000 views or approximately at the time that I've recorded this, but Oh my gosh. Yikes, bro. Yikes. You need to seriously get yourself some education because you missed everything. <laughs> like, I don't think you got, like, anything right other than, well, you flip-flopped a whole bunch on that indictment thing. But, oh, man, you got, all, you got like, everything wrong. Brother, you need to go watch some Coleon Noir videos and get educated on what the Second Amendment truly means. Like, comment, consider subscribing, guys, and... Uh, I'll see you in the next video. I had to, I just had to make this. This one just really fried me.